The next thing we want to cover in the terms of the opt in optics is the concept of resolution. And really, when we talk about this, what we're going to do is we're going to actually look at what happens with geometrical and wave optics meet. And this is not going to necessarily be clear at the end of this video of why the two are combining, but uh, we'll see in a, pre in a further example later on that this is actually what's, uh, that these two are playing a role in each, in how they interact with each other. So, if we think back to interference and diffraction, we see a pattern, and for example, this is a diffraction pattern from a single slit, and we observe um, the bright spots, you know, our primary bright spot, we get, you know, m equal 1, m equal 2, m equal 3. We also observe our dark spots, where our intensity goes to 0. Well, if we look at a second source through the same interference or diffraction pattern, so we put a second light, light bulb, on the far side of this screen, and we see that the two interference patterns will overlap, and the intensity from one interference pattern will be the same, and the second one will get this new interference pattern. And the way I have them lined up, we just happen to have the second, um, the m equal 1 and the m equal minus 1 for the two uh, things are lining up. And it doesn't have to be that way. It can be any variation that we have, depending on how far apart they are. Well, if they're close together, what we'll see is that when we put the two together and we bring them closer together, what's going to happen is their interference patterns are going to get closer together. And this is almost when they're on top of each other. This is something that we want to be careful about because there was some work done by Lord Rayleigh uh, way back when um, who defined that in order to see the difference between two points, two objects, uh, and to distinguish the difference between the two, we call this being resolved. In order to resolve the difference is when the maximum of one is at the first minimum of the other. So what does that mean? Well, if we start off with one, put a second in, if we move them closer together, right at this point where this peak right here corresponds with the minimum down here, there'll be this peak also will correspond to the minimum down there. These two are at the minimum separation, the minimum distance apart, where we can actually resolve the two points. And the two peaks that we'll see, we'll see a peak, our total intensity, we'll have some little um, intensity fluctuations down here. We'll get a peak here, it'll dim down, and then we'll get another peak. Notice we won't actually get to zero here, We'll get peak, peak, but these two intensity peaks will actually be able to see the difference. So that's what we call, what we'd say when we're resolving. Well, we know how to solve this problem. This is just taking into account what we've done before, and this is this previous this concept of the maximum uh, of one being at the minimum of the other is called the Rayleigh criterion, and we can actually write down what this is for a single slit uh, opening of A, so if we have a single slit that has a narrow uh, width of A, the first minimum falls at sine of theta is equal to lambda over A, which is approximately equal to theta if theta is small. Well, this means that the two, the angle that we can see the two objects at, if we're an observer, we're looking at two objects, the angle between the two that we see must be greater than lambda over A. So we have to be either at the minimum or greater. So what does that mean? Well, if we have a smiley face up here and a second smiley face down there, this angle right here that we see as an observer has to be greater than lambda over a. And if it's not, we won't be able to see the difference. Corresponding to that, there's uh, the circular aperture. So instead of having a narrow slit that looks, you know, just like a little box that has a narrow slit, we're going to look at a small little opening, a circular opening or an aperture. And it doesn't necessarily have to actually be small, but we're going to see that if it has a diameter, circle opening with a diameter, for instance, just kind of a teaser uh, for the next video is what happens if it's a lens, for instance, we'll see that the equation slightly modifies. And what it modifies to is that the angle has to be equal to 1.22 times this lambda over d. So if we have a circular opening, we have to um, 
uh, modify the previous equation up here by adding an extra little factor. So proportional to the wavelength over the opening is really what the angle has to be um, greater than. So good luck when you're solving these problems, and we'll look at this in just a little bit more detail in some upcoming videos.